Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be doing another wash day washing. Today, we will be using the Maytag A408S and the Kenmore Elite Catalyst. Now, in this one, I have three towels, two sweaters, or two sweatshirts, I should say, and a pair of pants as well, as well as a couple other small things. And over here, in the Maytag, I have a bunch of shirts and a pair of shorts. Now, I already have all the controls set. As you can see over here, we have hot, or no, warm, regular, with large load, and it is set to an eight minute wash. And over here, on the Catalyst, I have it set to regular, with no Catalyst treatment, large, or, yeah, large load, warm, warm, and eight minute wash. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the detergent here, which we will put into the dispenser. I missed a little bit, but that's fine. And the detergent we are using today is this mixture I have made of, uh, it's Surf and something else dollar store related, but they're both dollar store detergents. For this washer, we'll go ahead and we'll dump it down the center of the agitator. We will come over here. I'm going to turn the water onto the machines. And let's get started. I'll start it off with the, you know, I'm going out here and start it off with the catalyst. So we're gonna hit start. See where it comes into the tub down here. A little bit of air in the line there. Let's go over here to the Maytag and we will pull out the timer. See it fills from back there. Now I am not using any form of fabric softener or anything like that for this load. However, I am going to add some of these, which is uh, Downy uh, Unstoppables. You can see this one is now filling from its normal spot. Go ahead and throw all these in here. Now this is not, I know these are not for actual like softening, this is just to give it a scent, but this is because, well, this is not my laundry, so normally I wouldn't use these, but since it's not my laundry, I'm using them. And we'll go ahead and shake it around this one too. So now we wait while the two machines fill, and yeah. Take a better look at that Kenmore total care system. Team size capacity. As well as I don't think I've ever showed this, but a better look at the actual instructions under the lid. Pause the video to read this if you'd like. There's where you put the bleach in for this machine. And then there is the uh, data stamp, or the tag 
with the model and serial number. On this one, yeah, you can kind of just barely see the water level starting to rise. You can see it a little bit back there. And this is, yes, this is the uh, triple action agitator because as you can see, the base goes back and forth. This part augers, as you can see here, as well as it can go up and down to help, I guess, I'm not really sure what, what the purpose of having it go up and, up and down is. I guess it's to help better turn uh, heavy loads over. I think this one may actually end up filling first. You can see the water level down there. So here's the lint filter part of the agitator as well as it looks down the agitator here is where the machines drain this is the discharge for this just because i put it out of the way so it wouldn't be submerged underwater if i would look at all the machines in here as well as the new can more portable Yeah, this one is now starting to fill more. Ah. Don't mind that sound, that was just the hose falling out of the bucket that I had it resting on. Brush some of the detergent off of the side there. I'm gonna see some some of the soap is starting to bubble up down there. Let's see, does this one have anything like that yet? Not yet. You can see it. And some of the powder is down there. Lines may actually be a little bit too much for this load, but that's not really a concern of mine at the moment. I'm pretty sure the Maytag is going to fail first at this point because this one still has a little bit of a ways to go. They both have a little bit of a ways to go, but this one's filling a little bit slower than the Maytag. On large, I believe this one fills to. I think the neck. Either I think the neck row holds, if not one more above that. Tag agitating, and soon the catalyst will go. Now that we have better water pressure, there we go.
see that water pressure or the water circulating through there. I can do wind filter racks on these. There's this one. Estimated time remaining being 30 minutes. 29 now. And since this one is on regular, it will do about half the edit, half the wash cycle on high speed agitation, and then as soon as it gets to the point where it adds the bleach in, in this case there's no bleach, but the point where it would flush out the bleach dispenser, it'll uh, kick down to low speed agitation. Lower, but still decent turnover. We got about six minutes or so. Here's a better look at the cycles. We have warm with save sucks. And then over here we have small load or large load with regular agitation. This one does appear to be being affected by the cold a little bit. Because those belts are probably very cold. And this one's down to uh, low speed agitation over here. But yeah, this one is really not happy with the cold, so I'm going to go ahead and Pause it here. There we go. There's this one over here. It is just fine. And it has kicked itself down to low speed. And you can hear the bleach dispenser flushing out. You can't see it, but you might be able to see it back there a little bit if it does it again. I think it already did fall three times though. issue with these older belt drive machines. This one's still on its original belt, but you can see it is really unfortunately affected by the... Oh, maybe not. It's going now. It just needed a little moment. fine now so there must have just been a little I'm not really sure what that was about I'll 
probably gonna replace the belt on this next year though. So to a belt, do apologize for how badly my camera focuses with the uh, lighting, but I can't really do anything about that unfortunately. Let me go ahead and reset up my uh, lid switch thing here. So what I do is put it in a towel to prevent it from damage, jam, damaging any of the porcelain. I take it and pretty much sandwich it between the lid switch and the lid. And the pressure from the lid pushing against it is enough to keep the lid switch pushed in. And that's back to agitating at the speed it should be. Well, this one is over here still going at low speed. And on this one, we got 24 minutes remaining, so probably about two and a half, three minutes of agitation. This one has roughly three minutes of agitation left. Maytag power fit is really turning this load over here. It looks like just the right amount of water level for the load, too. See, there's that red shirt again that it just sucked down. In just a second, it'll be gone completely again. There we go. It's already back down at the bottom. Now this one's going to neutral drain, hopefully. Because it is kind of cold out here. Nope, it looks like it slipped the spin, but that's all right. This is the first time in a week that this has been used, and it's been kind of cool this whole week. So that explains, I think, why it slipped. But you can see it is still pushing out a lot of water. And a lot of, a lot of dirty water at that. But see, the temperature in here currently is not even 60 upper 50s, but sorry about my finger there. Oh, it looks like that one's gonna go to spin now, or soon. Meanwhile, this, there's that subs valve. Well, this one is over here spin draining. Hopefully it won't go off balance, because it is not a very, a rather heavy load, but it's not, or it's, it doesn't balance very well, this load, because there's an odd number of heavy things. Hopefully I balanced it correctly, but we'll see. I think I did just fine with this one. You see that all that water comes out there? It's coming out of this one right here. Whereas this Maytag is going to be draining out of here since I do have a set to save suds. Here we go, this one's going to drain now. You can see it pushing water out of down this hole here. You can kind of see it there, but not very well. There is a nice amount of bubbles here. This one appears to be getting close to being fully drained. And it looks like I did balance it decently well, at least. There's the spray rinse, and here's the actual spin.
second spare. It should happen any second now. out all its water. Oh, and that is very balanced. It'll switch over any second to start draining out of the other one for the spray rims. There we go. There is the spray rims. On this very well balanced paint bag. This one will probably be the first one to stop spinning. Okay, I'm not sure. This one only spins for about another minute after it spray rinses. Whereas that one, I'm not sure how much longer it has left. That one is full speed and very well balanced. This one's a little less balanced, but it's full speed. spinning in the same camera shot. Not really. There we go, there's this one. Coasting now. This one will begin filling for a rinse. And this one over here should, should begin filling for a rinse very shortly. Yeah, pretty much right as that hits 16 it should. if I can get any of that. And I do apologize for how much my hands shake. There we go. Yep, 16. And we are rinsing now. And you see we are filling for the rinse. Flashing the side. Oh, you watch it down there still. And that one, this one over here is. Yeah, this one has very weak water pressure when it's set to cold for the rinse. Because this one doesn't get as much water pressure as that one. This balance pulling 50-50 out of both hoses. This one's pulling cold out of one hose. But you can see it is still filling kind of slow but steady pace. Let's see that other end of here. Where it comes in from. Well, this one over here. Is pretty much up to the base of the agitator. We got the actual a similar spot. That's that back left corner of the machine. 
And then this drip in here is just a runoff from down like that. This one will probably fill first for the uh, rinse, but that's okay because this one does a longer rinse than that one does. Both of the Maytags do about a minute, maybe two minute rinse. I think closer to a minute though. This one rinses for about two minutes, which is one timer increment. This one rinses for four minutes, I believe. And then this one also rinses for four, four maybe even longer. So I'm not sure, because I know it does step it down for rinse in the cotton sturdy cycle. And then in this one, I do have, there is some clothes, but that's to be washed, not in video. Because that's just some smaller stuff, socks, uh, a couple of washcloths, stuff like that. This one, as you can see, is still making its way up the agitator. It's not even fully covered the fins yet. Good luck down there. You see, we don't have much lint out of these, because this is these are all pretty much like dress shirt kind of things. This one is almost fully up the base of the agitator, but not quite. That one's a little farther along because it got a head start, but this one will still beat it to the top. You can see it is still estimating the time remaining. We got 13 minutes according to this. Let's we'll see if we bump it up to cold, it'll decrease the pressure over here and increase the pressure over here. I'm gonna go ahead and step it back down to medium because this one will take forever when it's filling if we're on cold. That's also funny because it becomes a triangle. Let's see if you can watch it change here. There you go. Now it's more of a rectangle shape and it's filling faster. This one is just covering the entire base of the agitator. This one is just up to that bottom row, of that bottom hole on the agitator. And it goes to right around this height here, this row of holes. This one, however, goes to, I believe, this row of holes? I'm not sure. I don't pay good enough attention. And then for the rinse, it will also step down the, uh, it'll start at high speed agitation and step it down to low speed for the second time it flushes out the fabric softener to spend to. Actually, it's looking like it might be kind of close here. This one's this one's covering a little bit more. It's probably going to be very close to which one starts first. And if anyone's curious while I'm thinking about it, that washer, I do have it set up over here just for now so we can drain it into the sink. But normally, since it is on wheels, I just roll it over, push it, and it goes right there. Oh, and it looks like this one did beat it to the uh, filling. So that means this one will definitely be done first. But that one we can start turning over. Jeez, my camera's really bad there. There we go. Apologize about that. It's pretty much set to auto brightness or auto exposure, depending on what you want to call it, but it's really bad sometimes. 
empty in there. This one's almost full. Again, I want to, I once again apologize about the uh, auto brightness. Let's see if I can adjust it here. There we go. This one is now filling. We will wash it. Uh, just done the fabric softener here. There we go. If you look, right down there, you might be able to see a little bit of it. You see just a little bit of it while we get to that side. This one is, yeah, this one's turning it over much better now. I just want to show you guys that it does step it down as soon as it begins filling. Except for that second time. So if we watch, there we go. As soon as it starts flushing out that detergent dispenser a second time, it steps it down to low speed. Let's go back over here for a little bit. This one hasn't gotten enough love this video, I don't think. There we go, there's the end of the wash. It does uh, kinda, oh, a little water comes out of there at the end, but it's not big of a deal. Why is my camera giving me so many issues today? Gosh, look at that, look how white that is. When I pan over here. <laughs> that's, that's great. Once again, I do apologize for that, because Today hasn't been a very good vid very good day with my camera. I tried using it for something else earlier and it was giving me issues too. It's a little lower for this one, but it's actually quite a lot lower, but I don't know why it's so low for this one. It's like two row of holes, two rows of holes short of where it should be, but that's not a big concern because I did turn it over just fine. Here we go. Here's the fill. Look how much water pressure that thing pushes out there. If you look just over there, you can see the cattle is still going. This one will be pretty much just as balanced. Let's go back over to the catalyst and see where we're at over here. Even on low speed, it still turned it over very well. Slow, but still very well. What are we at time-wise? Nine minutes, so it's very close to going to the next stage. Sounds like the Maytag has just finished pumping out its last little bit of water. Any second now, it should go to the next. There we go. See, it was right on the money for that. Let's see if it neutral drains this time. And we are gonna successfully neutral drain. Watch the water level go down in there. Might be able to even hear the uh, agitate cam going back and forth a little bit. base the machine, Let's see if you can hear anything. Not really. You can actually hear it better from in here. We are almost fully drained over here. Meanwhile, the mate tag over here has gotten itself up to full speed. 
and our yard are still pumping a lot of water out of here. So out of focus, what on earth? There we go. We are in the damp dry portion of the cycle, as you can see there. We're back over here to the catalyst so you can see, see it uh, engage the spin. out of water. There we go. You can see the entire tub lurch forward here for the uh, engage into the spin. Let's see if it does it. There we go. And then we have the sprayer in. Here we go for the final spin. when I try to take videos of it, it just must not like guests. Do the second spray rinse, any second now. Right about now. This one finished out its cycle. Still amazingly balanced. You can see the Kenmore pushing water out over there. There we go. And that's the end of this one's cycle. And we will grab a basket real quick. My broken basket at that. Set that over there for when it's ready. Come back over here and we can watch this one finish out its cycle. We've still got five minutes. See, we are in the spinning part of the cycle, as it says. I do have the cycle signal, or end of cycle signal set to loud. the lid down, this thing is still very quiet. Well, with the lid up, it's quiet, but with the, with the lid down, it's even quieter. This is probably the quietest machine, though, except with the exception of the timer, because it, it, the timer on this one is very loud. If you want to know what I mean, go to the... Uh, video of the delicate cycle of this and in the entire time it's paused you can just hear the timer like groaning well this is also new I forgot to mention this this is a little speed queen glass measuring cup Let's see if i can get my camera to focus on it we have half a pint we have ounces cups and tablespoons it is glass so much better quality than these stupid plastic scoopers but I won't use it yet. Keep getting down there in four minutes. And I'll just, if you guys want, I'm gonna put you guys in the machine. that like direct drive uh, like wobble where you can see it kind of goes like that every once in a while. I'm not sure why they do that but pretty much every direct drive I've seen I've seen does that. This one does it and my mom's direct drive does it as well as both of my grandma's old direct drives did it.
So, of the five direct drives my family has owned, with the exception being that one, all of them have this, all of them have had this little, like, shake to them, where they kind of go like this, in like a rhythmic pattern. Again, I really don't know why they do that. If anyone knows, uh, let me, let me know, because I'm very in intrigued as to why they do that. So we're at two minutes now. You can see there's that green cycle complete light, and that is the end of this load, and that is the end of today's video. So if you liked, uh, be sure to leave a like, and if you are not already, subscribe and share it if you'd like. And I will see everyone in the next video. Bye!